Okay, here in this video we're going to explore the idea of mixing paints. So this is a close-up of the chart I started with and you can see here that I drew one square for every paint color I had in the palette I was working with plus one. So in this case I had eight colors so there are nine squares across and nine squares down. And in each one of the squares across the top and down on the right, the left side, I put the color name of the paint. Then I went and I swatched the paint colors in their original unmixed or blended or touched up form in each of the squares that contained their color name. I'm here working with a uh, Pacific Northwest inspired color palette uh, which contains some M. Graham paints, some Daniel Smith paints, and some Blick Art Materials paints. That being said, it's a non-traditional color palette as you can see. Uh, there is no bright yellow, there is no you know super bright red. It's very much non-traditional so I wanted to see what colors I could get by mixing them with each other. Um, so this is a good color mixing practice if you're unfamiliar with the process. The idea behind it is to mix each color with each other color. So in this case I had eight colors. That top corner square I put an X in because that one stays empty. And then you start from the left to the right across the top and you swatch each color across. And then on the right, the left side, you start from the top down and swatch the colors in the same order that you did across the top. Then in each one of the squares, you go up to the top and across to the left and see which two colors are represented. Mix them together in approximately 50-50 quantity and then swatch them. So here I'm working with the buff color which is on the left and I'm going across and I'm mixing it with each one of the other colors. There will always be one square in each row that's the pure color in this kind of a color chart. Now these are watercolors so how dark and intense the colors are it really depends on how much water you have. I tended to um, not have that much water so they were pretty dark but you don't have to do it that way. This process can be done with any other kind of paint um, that you have in your stash or inks, um, acrylics. It's really interesting to do it with these non-traditional colors uh, like are in this palette or maybe your favorite colors uh, for instance for me in some of my acrylic painting are say lime green, turquoise, pink, and uh, Naples yellow. Uh, those are pretty non-traditional colors and if you took them and did a chart like this, what colors would you get mixing them with each other? Um, and doing it in an organized fashion like this ensures that you get say that buff color mixed with every other color on the palette. You get that ochre color mixed with every other color on the palette. Sometimes the changes are subtle if the if one of the pigments is stronger than the other, like with some of these the colors in this particular palette, um, but sometimes you get striking, surprising differences that you just didn't anticipate. Um, so it's good color mixing practice. It's good uh, to have a chart when you're working with a palette and you're unfamiliar with, oh, how, how am I gonna get that flesh tone or something that's close to it? This may get you a, one or two steps closer to getting that color that you want by doing this and you know there's nothing to be afraid of just start mixing and start playing uh, I would recommend limiting your color palette initially to no more than eight colors if you're going to do this um, the more colors you have the longer it's going to take you to get through this color chart um, if I would recommend to start with maybe you just do it with three or four colors instead of eight uh, but don't do more than eight and um, I hope that you learn and discover something about mixing color that you enjoy and uh, let me know how it goes. Uh, you can see here the very slight differences I'm having so far in um, the colors, the ochre and the buff, and I'm mixing them with the other colors. And um, as I go along here, you see as you go down the yellow ochre column from the top down, 
look at all of those different shades of ochre that I got by mixing it with those other shades. It was surprising. And if you do the same thing with the red that was in this palette, look at all those different shades. Holy cow. Um, and the blue with that red made some really pretty neutrals. Um, and I was surprised there are two pretty strong neutrals in this palette and mixing them with the, all of those other colors I, I got some really interesting neutral shades that I think are going to be really fun to paint with. So I hope this gives you some ideas. Uh, I was, I know, very surprised by the results, even though I've done this before, but then I'm always surprised by the results. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something and you get something interesting out of it. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Support the free content here on YouTube if you could by clicking on my link tree link and um, going over to my Etsy shop or my Amazon store, buying my book, joining Patreon, something like that. You can also follow me on social media um, by clicking on the link tree link because my social media links are there. Uh, at the time of the airing of this video, I believe that my Teespring store um, to buy merch will be available here through YouTube. I don't know exactly how that's gonna work, but I guess we'll all find out together. There should be a link somewhere. And um, yeah, don't forget to hit the little bell icon if you want notifications of when new video videos come out. And the most important thing, of course, is to go out, have some fun, do some playing, swatch your paints, and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.